The UN has accused North Korea of violating sanctions and supplying weapons to Syria and Myanmar. According to a leaked UN report, North Korea earned nearly $200 million in 2017 from banned commodity exports. Pyongyang has been under sanctions since 2006. They were stepped up last year to stop the country from pursuing a ballistic and nuclear missile program. For more on this, John Merrill joins us from Washington, D.C. He is a visiting scholar at the U.S. Korea Institute. Thank you so much for joining us. John, North Korea is apparently violating sanctions, so do sanctions work at all? I think they've been over-advertised myself. Uh, I suppose they're better than uh, a kinetic response to North Korea. But uh, the problem is, uh, if you're going to have sanctions, you have to have clearly signposted off-ramps. And uh, I don't think we have those right now. What do you mean by clearly signposted off-ramps? Our policy has become more and more a pressure campaign. And considering the history between the U.S. and North Korea, I think that's unlikely to have much of a positive effect. If anything, it's going to increase their sense of threat and uh, make them more difficult to deal with. Recently, however, North Korea has said that it will take part in the Winter Olympics, that it will talk to South Korea, engaging in talks which have not taken place for several years. Um, is this not sanctions having a positive effect? Is this something else? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, uh, President Trump has taken credit for this, of course, as you know. But, uh, you know, North Korea has always pursued a two-track policy. Uh, on the one hand, building up their strategic systems, but on the other hand, um, trying to build up their economy. And I think that uh, their decision to go to the Olympics is an extension of that second track of building up their economy. They need to have a relationship with South Korea, and they need to get inter-Korean trade going again uh, to revive their economy. By the way, they're not exactly a basket case. According to South Korean estimates in the last few years, despite sanctions, uh, the economy has grown at almost 4 percent a year. Well, that's some of the fascination with North Korea, isn't it, though? It's, it's, it's not really knowing what goes on behind closed doors. What options do you think there are for engaging North Korea? Well, we, we are trying to uh, do that. Um, but uh, I think the policy has drifted a little bit. Uh, it, it was maximum pressure and engagement. But the and engagement lately has become almost an afterthought. I would say that uh, from time to time, we see rather encouraging comments off the cuff from President Trump. Uh, yesterday, he was quoted as saying that uh, we'll, the, the Olympics is a positive development, and we'll have to see what happens after that. But I, I think people need to put more emphasis on the diplomatic side and less on the military side. You know, when the U.S. floats uh, um, the, the whole region with carrier task forces and to intimidate North Korea, I don't think that's going to have a good result. Thank you so much for that analysis. That is John Merrill, a visiting scholar at the U.S. Korea Institute.